Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have another very interesting problem from the JE test, the JE advanced test. It's an ex, it's a, it's a problem that appeared on a previous test. And what's very interesting about this one is that it also applies to an actual experiment, a brilliant experiment that was conducted in order to determine the value for Planck's constant. Now, you may remember that Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And based upon that, you may look at the answer and go, well, answer C is the closest to the actual value, so I'll pick C. But that would be dangerous to do because that may not have been the value that they determined by one of the earlier experiments. It could be any one of those four answers. So this is the experiment that they did. In a historical experiment to determine Planck's constant, a metal surface was irradiated with light of different wavelengths. The emitted electron energies were measured by applying a stopping potential, and that's all given in this particular table. They also give you the speed of light and the charge of a single electron, which I'm actually surprised because normally they don't give you many constants on the JE test, but at least they gave you those two, although by now almost everybody probably memorizes those already. Well, here we are. If light of 0.3 micrometers, which is 300 nanometers, was used, the stopping potential necessary to stop the emitted electrons is 2 volts. When the wavelength went up to 400 nanometers, you only needed 1 volt, and at 500 nanometers, you needed 0.4 volts to stop the exiting electrons. So from that, they're supposed to have been able to determine Planck's constant. So let's think about that for a moment. So here we have the metal. There's electrons near the surface. We have an incoming photon of a particular wavelength of either 300 nanometers, of 400 nanometers, or of 500 nanometers. And then the electron would be ejected with some sort of kinetic energy or some sort of velocity, and you would need some stopping potential to stop it. So it turns out that the energy of the, or uh, let's, let's put it this way. I think I'll just think of it in terms of uh, stopping potential. The stopping potential required is equal to the energy of the photon minus the, the uh, work function, the amount of energy required to free the electron. So the total energy of the incoming photon will be used to free the electron, and the remainder of the two will be the stopping potential necessary to stop the emerging uh, electrons. So we can see here that the energy of the photon is equal to the sum of the, of the work function plus the stopping potential necessary to stop the electrons. Okay? The energy of a photon, they knew, they suspected at that point, that the energy was equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency, or in terms of the wavelength, it would be hc over lambda equals the the work function plus the stopping potential. So that's the basis of what we're dealing with here. Now notice they give us the stopping potential in volts, so the energy needs to be converted to electron volts. So we're also going to need the conversion factor, the, the charge of a single electron to convert from volts to electron volts. That being true, then we can see here that if we solve this for h, we can say that h therefore is equal to the wavelength divided by the speed of light times the charge of a single electron times the product of the work function plus the stopping potential. So now when we plug in the very first value, we can see that Planck's constant then would be equal to 300 nanometers, which is 300 times 10 to the minus 9 meters divided by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, and divided by E, which is, um, ooh, is it divided by E or is it multiplied by E? This should be divided by E, which means that this here becomes multiplied by E. I put it in the wrong place. We have to divide by E in order to convert from, from volts to electron volts, which means you have to multiply here. So let's multiply that times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, and then we multiply that times the work function plus, in this case, 2 volts to stop it. All right, take a look at here. We have 3 and 3, that goes to 1 and 1. So we have 100 times 10 to the minus 9. So we have h is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And we then subtract another minus 8 there. 
and then we multiply that times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and that's multiplied times the work, fun the work function plus the stocking potential. Okay, so here when we multiply this, we say h is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 15 minus 19 is minus 34, multiplied times the work function plus the stopping potential. There we go. The problem, of course, is we do not know the work function, and so we're not quite sure what we're dealing with here. Okay, what we can do then is go to the next one where we apply 400 micrometers. So we can say that h is equal to, now the wavelength, which is in the numerator, went from 300 to 400. So that would be four-thirds the original value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 34. Why did I do four-thirds? Because it went from 300 nanometers to 400 nanometers. But now we can say that this is the work function plus one volt. Hmm. So, so at this point, do I can I solve for this? Notice that h is equal to this and h is equal to this. Now I have two values for h. I can set those equal to each other. So I can see here on the left side I have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 34 times the work function plus 2 is equal to 4 thirds times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied times plus 2. Of course, this cancels out on both sides. Multiplying both sides by 3, I can say that 3 times this plus 2 equals 4 times uh, let's see here. I, I think I did something wrong. This should be plus 1 because that's the 4 thirds times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 34 times the work function plus 1 volt required. So this is 4 times this plus 1. And now notice we can solve that for the work function. So let's come up here to finish this up. So we can see that 3 times the work function plus 6 equals four times the work function plus four. And that means that if I subtract four from both sides and three times the work function, we get two equals the work function. So now we have a value for the work function, which means that h is, h is this times this. So in other words, we can now say that h, Planck's constant, is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 34 multiplied times 4 because the work function plus 2 since the work function is 2 we can say that's equal to 4 and so Planck's constant as discovered was 6.4 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds and the answer that complies with that is answer number B or answer B not number B but answer B and so with that initial experiment the first initial estimate of the Planck's constant was 6.4 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, fairly close to the actual value of 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Again, quick summary of what we just did. We have an incoming photon of 300, 400, and 500 nanometers corresponding to the needed potential stopping, stopping voltage, stopping potential to stop the electrons of 2 volts, 1 volt, and 0.4 volts. We have four possible answers for Planck's constant. We know that the stopping potential is the energy of the incoming photon minus the work function, or the energy of the photon is the sum of the work function plus the stopping potential. And the energy of the photon is Planck's constant times the frequency, or h times c over lambda. Then, to convert that to electron volts, we also have to divide it by the charge of a single electron. If we do that, we get this for Planck's constant, h is equal to lambda e over c. We're given the lambda for the first incoming radiation. We know the charge of a single electron. We know the speed of light. We can simplify that to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 34 times the work function plus the stopping potential. Stopping potential is known as 2 volts. We do that again for the next wave coming in, the 400 nanometers, which is 4 thirds, 300 nanometers. So everything is the same except we multiply times 4 thirds, and the stopping potential went from 2 to 1. 
Now we have two expressions for h. For Planck's constant, we set them equal to each other. That allows us to solve for the work function. Once we plug that in, 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 times this gives us the value for Planck's constant as discovered through the experiment, which in this case, 1.6 times 4 is 614 times 10 to the minus 34. And that is how you solve this particular problem. Where did you get the four-thirds? The four-thirds came from the first time we used 300 nanometers to irradiate the metal. Then we used 400 nanometers to radiate the metal. So lambda went from 300 to 400. Since everything was calculated using 300, then to go to 400, 400 is four-thirds of 300. So that's why a quick way, so we don't have to recalculate everything. You can just quickly go from 300 to 400 nanometers and then set the two equations equal to each other. What about the Planck constant with the H bar? H bar, they use that in quantum mechanics because there's so many times I have to divide Planck's constant by 2 pi that they just came up with a new constant. So they simply H divided by 2 pi and they just call it H bar because they see it so many times and that way they don't have to write it. They just say H bar. You don't need to go to the third option, that's right. Yeah, you don't need the third one. The two, two was enough, you needed two equations, two unknowns, and that's why it was done.